this lesson, I'm going to talk a little more about the dissonant intervals. And since you already know quite a bit about intervals by this point, you can use your knowledge of the previous lessons to solve some of these, these problems. So I'm just going to write up here dissonant. And these are going to be the seconds and the sevenths. And like the consonant intervals, you're going to have major and minor. And then if you got bigger, you'd have augmented. And if you got smaller, you'd have diminished. So what happens if you want to make, let's say, a minor second down from here? Okay, so this is actually kind of a tricky one. If we think about it on the keyboard, it seems really easy. So I'll show you that. So here's an F sharp, and we're wanting to make a minor second down. Well, that's easy to play. We know it's right here. It's F. Okay, now the problem with this is, if we're thinking of this as F sharp and this is F, those are the same letter names. So that can't be a second, because a second would have to be an F sharp to some kind of an E. Okay, well, that's okay though. We can kind of recreate that E as, let's see, let's call this an E sharp. And now it's going to work. So let's look back up on the board here. So here's our E. We know we need some kind of E because it says second. And then minor means that we need one half step. If we leave it like this, just a plain E natural, we're actually going to have two half steps. Okay, so minor second is just the same as a half step. So I'm going to put this in front of it. Okay, so that's kind of nice to know that a minor second is the distance of one half step. So if we do it here on the board, I'm going to take, I'm just going to pick this one. I could, I could do either one. I'm going to pick this one and I'm going to wrap it around over this into the next octave. Okay. And I'll take that away. So if we count, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and se uh, two plus seven is going to add up to nine, and it always has to add up to nine. So now we know, this isn't right anymore, we had a minor seventh down, or minor second down rather, now we have some kind of a seventh going up. We also know from before that minor intervals are going to invert to major intervals. They're just going to go the opposite way. And let's listen to that on the keyboard. And you want to listen to the relationship between that minor second and that major seventh. So here we had this. This was our original interval, like that F sharp down to E sharp. And then we check that bottom note and we flipped it around. So this note is going to want to go all the way up here. And you notice this is almost an octave. If I did this, it would be an octave. So major sevenths are almost octaves. They're pretty wide intervals. And they're really dissonant. That one has a certain kind of dissonance to it. That minor second has more of a kind of agitated dissonance because the notes are so close together. So now we're going to try uh, major second. And I'm going to do a B flat and major second down from that. Okay, so we already know um, it's going to be some kind of an A because we need to count two letter names or we're not going to get the right thing. So some kind of an A. Now, just from thinking about what the piano keyboard looks like, I know that B flat down to A, I think that's just a half step. So this is not going to be big enough. I need two half steps to get a major second because major seconds are going to be like a whole step as far as the distance is concerned. So if this isn't big enough, I'm going to widen it by putting a flat in front of that. So now I have B flat down to A. That's one half step and A to A flat is another. So what I'll do is just invert that. And maybe this time I'll take the top note and flip it around. Again, I'm just inverting it. Okay, 
Okay, so it was a major second down. So major should invert to minor. Second should invert to seventh, like this. Okay, so I should have now a minor seventh. And let's look at that on the keyboard again. So here's my B flat, and I wrote down to an A flat to get that major second. And then I'm going to take that B flat, and I'm going to put it down the octave. Okay. And there's a minor seventh. And it has a more mellow dissonance to it, as does the major second, because they're so related, they're inversions of each other. So remember, the tritone is in between a fourth and a fifth. It's in between a perfect fourth and a perfect fifth, as far as the size. Okay. And it has this special name because it used to really shock people when they heard it. So they had to come up with their own special name for it. And uh, we abbreviate it. People abbreviate it like this. This is really common and it looks like pi. But it's actually just because the two T's tend to kind of run together. So if you see this, it just stands for tritone. So let's try figuring out how we get that. So a tritone can be two things, and I'm going to show you one of them, and then I'll show the other. So I mentioned a little bit before about how sometimes B and F can be troublesome when you're trying to write perfect intervals. And that's because when you have either F up to B or B up to F on the piano keyboard, you automatically get that tritone sound. Okay, so let's look at how that works. So on the keyboard here, here we have an F up to a B. So it's just a fourth, one, two, three, four. But this is going to give us that dissonance. Okay. And any other fourth that we play on the white keys is just going to be perfect. Like this one. Oh, here's that dissonant one again. And if we keep going, they're all perfect again. And then the same thing is true with fifths. If we make a fifth by going from B to F. Same thing as the F to B, just they're just in different octaves. We're automatically going to get a tritone. All the other fifths are all going to be perfect. Okay, so let's look back up on the board here. So specifically there are two kinds of tritones because we need to have numbers to refer to these just like we have with the other intervals. So this has got to be some kind of a fourth because if we count we get four. However, it's not a perfect fourth. Um, a perfect fourth should only have five half steps. And tritones always have six half steps. Okay? So um, when you count them up on the piano keyboard, you'll see that. Sometimes I like to think instead of six half steps, I like to think three whole steps. Sometimes that's easier. So I'm going to take this. It was perfect. If I had done something like this, it would be perfect. But since it's not, Perfect intervals, when they get bigger, become augmented. So, F to B, F natural, B natural, becomes an augmented fourth. You could also write like this, aug four, that would be fine, or even just A four, but I'll be using this one. Okay, so this is an augmented fourth. And then, of course, if we invert it, put a line here. We're going to get you know, 4 plus 5 equals 9, so this is a fifth. When you invert an augmented interval, the opposite of that is diminished. So diminished fifth. Now this is kind of an interesting one. You see we're inverting these. The, these are the kind of opposite qualities. We see 4 and 5 adding up to 9. But then 6 half steps here. If the half steps add up to 12, this is also 6 half steps. So any of the other intervals that you invert, you're going to get different numbers of half steps. But if you invert a tritone, you're going to get six, no matter what. So when we do this, first thing we're going to do is worry about the number right there. So I know that fourths look like, you know, there's going to be one on the line, one on the space. So I know this is what a fourth looks like. Not worrying about this part yet. And whoop, actually what I want here is a diminished fifth. So here, fifth, one, two, three, four. 
oh yeah, they're both going to be on the same thing, whether they're both on a line or both on a space, whenever you're writing a fifth. Okay, so now all I have to do is make sure I have six half steps in each one. And uh, like I said before, sometimes it's easier to think of that as being three whole steps. And uh, maybe we can look at that on the piano. So, first one, we were going to write an augmented fourth up from here. And we have this so far, but this is definitely not augmented yet. This sounds too perfect. So I'm going to count whole steps this time. And I count three of them. One, two, three. So I'm going to need a C sharp. I'm not going to change my letter name because I wanted to specifically do a fourth. So I'm going to keep it as a C sharp, not a D flat or anything like that. So now when we write the diminished fifth down from A, we're going to use the same strategy we used over here. So let's go over to the piano. So here's our A. And we're going to count three whole steps down. So here's one. Here's two. And then three is going to take us here. And on the board originally, when we didn't know what our accidentals were, we had this, which was actually a perfect fifth. So we're going to need to sharp that D to get our six half steps or three whole steps, which gives us that diminished fifth. So it's going to look like this. And that's it for this lesson.